Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. I'm an artist and illustrator. Some of the clients I've worked for are Marvel, DC Comics, and HBO. This is part one of a three-part tutorial series. To get the ball rolling, I'm going to show you how to use ZBrushes to bring your sketches to life. Okay, let's get to work. I like to start off in ZBrush, and what I'll do is I'll make a model of what I plan on painting and get it pretty accurate. Um, so in this uh, instance, what I've done is make a spider Gwen, uh, kind of posed her the way that I liked. So what I'll do is set up my lights in ZBrush, uh, which are basically some primitives that I can bring into Keyshot. Um, they will, uh, I'll designate them as area lights. So I usually do a couple of spheres that are going to be the main light and the fill light and a, uh, and a plane, which I'm going to use as a backlight. And so I'll designate those with uh, some materials that I can bring in and make sure that they're separated away from the uh, Gwen piece and easily selectable. And now I'm in Keyshot. Uh, what I'm doing now is just setting up a really quick environment and testing uh, the lights that I put in. Um, you can see on her back, it's, it's a, a harsh white. In the front is, um, you know, I've got my fill and my uh, main light in there. And now I'm just doing a couple of tests. So I usually spend some time uh, kind of futzing around with the lights until I get something that I like. Uh, and here you can see that um, they are, uh, you know, they're not quite right, but I'll, I'll make a couple render passes and then composite them. Um, then I go into Photoshop. In Photoshop, uh, you'll see these uh, clown colors uh, on here, and it's actually called a clown pass, which I did in Keyshot. And all that is is it allows me to mask out areas quickly. Uh, if I have a piece that I want to composite on there where the lighting might be different, or you know the uh, the colors might be a little better, I can easily select those areas. And you can see I'm kind of selecting a bicep now. I know that I want a better pass of that in addition to the um, to the whites, which are completely blown out here. It's gonna look a lot better what it's done, but this is the process. So I know that actually these reds, I like uh, the whites uh, were, were too blown out. So I'm gonna take all of these uh, red webbing areas and bring them into a better uh, overall render of the whites. So just masking out areas that I don't want. Um, I like to keep it uh, non-destructive as possible, so I have a layer mask there. And uh, what you'll notice is I switch around between a lot of applications. I like to use Photoshop for compositing and color correction, Keyshot to do my renders, ZBrush obviously to do the sculpting, and then take it into Corel Painter. I do notice that I get jobs uh, quite frequently that are really quick turnaround times, so. What I'll do is use this method to make my illustrations much quicker than I normally would. Uh, it basically makes it so that I don't have to uh, figure out lighting in my head and, and just go in and paint an area, realize I don't like it, and then paint it over again, which I've done in the past, and it's, you know, it's not fun. Um, so this is a little, uh, a little better of a, a practice here. So again, back in Photoshop, you can see I'm making selections. Uh, these are areas that uh, I want to uh, fix. And so uh, for this piece, there's a lot of prep work right here. Um, I, I eventually get into the paint, uh, but what you'll see is that I've spent, and this is sped up quite a bit, but you'll see that I spent quite a, quite a, a little bit of time. I think I spent the entire day in Photoshop, just getting something that I, I liked as a base here. So, just going in, making my blacks the way that I want them to look, and and getting the colors saturated the way I want. And I'm going to go in later after this is all done and do some distortions on her. So, uh, I think I realized that I didn't really like the proportions that much. Um, I know she's lanky and she's young and everything, so. I actually stretch her out a little bit more since she's the spider man of her of her uh, world. Um, spider man is supposed to be kind of exaggerated and stretched out, so so should uh, Gwen here. So in this part, I'm turning on and turning off layers. I do this a lot. I'll turn down the opacities, mess with the uh, 
with the levels and the saturation until I find something that um, pops as much as possible. And uh, it's starting to look a little bit better now. It still looks very 3D. That's one thing that I don't want in my final piece. So the paint over generally um, isn't a straight paint over. I'll run some filters in Corel that are going to make this feel like it's a block in of color, uh, which I would do anyway. It just saves me a lot of time because it has the, the colors that I want from the original piece, but it doesn't look as tight as this image, so it doesn't look like a 3D rendered image at all. And I can go in and look at the original, um, use that as reference, and then paint my piece based on the information from the other image, and, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty good to go. You know, I have all my proportions right, I have my colors right, and uh, it's go time. And I can get a piece done a lot faster. On the average, a piece like this would take me, if I was just doing it from a line drawing, probably take me a, a week or two. More than likely, it'd probably take me two weeks. Uh, this piece, I did not have that much time. I think I had a matter of days. I had uh, already sculpted the, the Spider Gwen and Z brushes just like a personal piece. And uh, that took me, um, I don't know, that took me maybe a week and um, decided to use that as my base and work it up. So I was able to take that piece and go through the process you're seeing here in I think maybe three days. The paint was super fast because again, the reference is, you know, it's pretty spot on. Um, the reason that I use all these applications and I decided to you know, stop doing my old process, which was basically just scouring the internet for pictures of different you know people and poses and cosplayers and then you know kind of cobbling all that stuff together in a Frankenstein image in Photoshop which looked you know okay uh, but the lighting was always the problem right so when you do that you might have the right arm and the right leg and all that other stuff but uh, invariably the thing that's going to come back and, and cause problems for somebody uh, like me is the lighting, you know. Uh, it's never going to be in the, right, in the right spot. You might have a, a great arm that's lit from the front, uh, but the rest of the piece is kind of, uh, you know, lit from the top or might even be backlit or something like that. I used to run into that problem a lot when I was um, working for various clients. So this way, I can sculpt everything myself, uh, bring it into uh, into Keyshot and set up these lights, and it's it's magic. You know what I mean? Like I can just uh, I can get exactly what I want every time, and even if the sculpt isn't right, you know, like I just did a piece for uh, some X Men cards, and uh, you know the 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 sculpture was okay. Um, I would probably have to spend a lot more time on it if I was going to make it into a statue or something. But I took that piece and uh, did this process and was able to do a painting in, I think, a day and a half, which is like the fastest I've ever worked. In a lot of these instances, you'll run into either time constraints or you know, money issues. Um, I always wanted to do these superhero cards because I grew up loving them. Um, X-Men and Spider-Man and all that stuff but you know they're they're cards so it doesn't pay a whole lot um, and uh, you know so you gotta you gotta trim where you can and I, I want to give the client an amazing painting or at least something they feel like they've uh, spent good money on um, but I don't want to spend my money on it if that makes sense you know, the longer I spend on a piece, the more it's costing me. Um, and you can't make that money back, and you can't get that time back with your family or anything like that. So uh, you got to do what you can to uh, to get smart about painting, and that's where this kind of this process comes in handy. So what you'll see now is I've I've done my distortion. I kind of stretched her out a little bit, uh, figured out the crop, and um, I think I'm gonna move her web around a little bit and um, then it's time for paint 
And I've been doing this for uh, for a number of years. I think I started freelancing as a as an illustrator in 2003. Um, I used to work with a clothing company and make T-shirts uh, back in the day, and uh, you know that was fun. But I always knew I wanted to be an illustrator, so. I ended up uh, transitioning from that job where I was a staff artist uh, and then kind of became a creative director for the shirt department and moved on to illustration. You know, I found my first client and uh, kind of went on from there. So. All right, so I'm checking out the canvas size. I know I want it to be I want it to be in a, in a landscape format and I'm just kind of flipping it back and forth mirroring it to see how she looks from both sides that's a an old artist trick where you know you can catch a lot of your mistakes as I look at this I decide you know I'm gonna go in and kind of fix some things that I don't like about my sculpt so, great thing about Photoshop, it's super fast. I can go in and think I wanted her leg to be a little thicker. And, uh, you know, so just go in and liquefy a little before and after. I think I like that better. And then I decide I'm going to do her other leg. And this is, uh, this is the deal. So, part of the reason I love kind of bouncing between. Photoshop and Painter is that they both are really good at different things. You know, um, Liquify is, and I, I love this this feature. I use it all the time to fix problems in an illustration. I might go in and have a likeness that is maybe you know 90% of the way there, but I feel like it can be a little stronger. So you know, go into Photoshop and pop open Liquify. And I can, uh, you know, fix the, the nose or, you know, the space between the eyes or whatever that I might have, you know, been in a hurry and not gotten quite right. Um, here I'm just erasing away the, uh, the bits that are underneath so that this leg feels at home on her body. And the thing about this piece that was kind of interesting is that I, I kind of liked it at first, but I wasn't loving it until I did this distortion. They can make her hand a little bigger. I just felt like I wanted it to be uh, a little more comic-y. So doing this made me feel a lot happier about the piece overall. And you know, as you can see, it, it's very blurry here and you know, uh, kind of desaturated in areas. But it's okay because all I really care about is getting the proportions I like, and then you know I can go in and fix everything else in the paint. You know, just kind of cleaning up some areas that don't need to be there. I think that strap on her backpack would have been confusing for some people. So the other thing is I felt like there were areas on her that were a little too thin. And I don't want her to feel, you know, emaciated or anything. She should, she should look like a woman, but, you know, I think she's, I don't know if she's a teenager or in college or whatever. I don't, I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about Spider Gwen, but I know that she's, uh, she's a cool character. So, just thickening up that hip a little bit, painting in some areas so it works. I mean, really, I don't have to do that because I'm going to paint the whole piece over again, but I was just like, you know, I don't want it to be confusing when I'm looking at the, the piece of painter. So, just do a quick paint in Photoshop. I paint in Photoshop sometimes, too, um, but I don't know, maybe like 90% of my work, 95% of my work is done in Corel. I just like the media better. Really like their brushes, and um, and the effects feel very natural, which is what I'm going for. I don't want my stuff to look too slick or too digital. You know, for a long time, I didn't even admit that I was a digital artist. 
uh, because I didn't want people to think that I was, you know, cheating, whatever that means. I've done this long enough now that, you know, anything that works, that's yours, you know, you're doing the work, so as long as you're not copying somebody's style or stealing their work and, you know, claiming it as your own, you're putting in the hours. I didn't even like to tell people when I first started doing these paint overs because I was like, you know, it's a paint over. Uh, but I had a friend tell me one time that, uh, you know, it's your model, like you sculpted the model, so you're painting over your own work. And uh, ever since then I was like, you know what, you're right. And I think I'm tripping. So now I just make the most of it and uh, it works for me. So you can see here, just rotating around, I'll do that a lot just to see what it looks like from all different angles and uh, look for mistakes that I might not see from staring at it one way too long. I'm trying to figure out this background. I think in the end, um, I end up painting a, uh, like a skyline, really simplified skyline, just because this looks too graphic to me. You know, it's boring. She's kind of flat as it is, so I don't want a flat background too. Uh, she doesn't have a whole lot of detail in her costume. Here's where it gets a little crazy. So I think what I decide to do at this point is to take her entire body and distort it with a, uh, with a warp feature. And so I'm now doing that in the background, but I'm gonna do that to her body even some more just to make it really pop off. levels to make that front leg a little more a little more poppy okay now I'm in uh, painter which is okay what you're seeing now might be a little confusing what I did was I took my piece and I designated that as the clone source and what I'm doing is an auto paint uh, this auto paint is great because you can choose any of the brushes and let the computer randomly kind of fill in the information to try to match your image. And what's great about this, what I usually do is I'll do a few layers where I have like a super simple block in with uh, maybe some oil pastels. Uh, and then I'll come in and, and get a little more detail. You can make your brush smaller and, uh, and continue the clone on a new layer. And then erase away parts and add parts or whatever the case may be. It's great because it's super non-destructive, you know? So I'm running this thing here. Uh, it's gonna start to look a little more like the source image, which is great because at this point it looks like a pastel image. That's great for me because I want the color. The thing to remember about this is, you know, you could let it run until it looks just like your original image, but why would you want to do that? Um, what I'll do is I'll let it run just enough that I can see what I want to uh, paint over. And um, it's better than just blurring that or original image. Um, I've done that in the past and what I find is that it looks so close to the original that I'm, I'm not making my own decisions. You know, I'm just kind of copying what I had in the first place. And when you're done, you've painted a piece that's a nice replica of a, a 3D render, which what is the point of that? So, letting this run for a bit, what you're gonna find is that it starts to have a little too much detail. Uh, what I'll do is I'll let it get to a, a happy medium and then turn down the opacity of the layer so that um, all of that isn't there but my colors are there and I can see the shape of what I want. Another way that I've done work in the past when I didn't want to do cloning is just uh, you know set up my original and um, when I'm happy with the, uh, with the look of it I'll, you know, make a line drawing based off of that image. The client just wants a great painting at the end of the day. So, you know, you could spend a week on it, spend two days on it. If it looks as good either way, then the client's going to be happy.
I hope you've enjoyed this. Stay tuned for part two, coming soon.